So welcome everybody. Welcome to another podcast. The topic for tonight is the endocrine system. And it's November the 2nd, by the way, 2023. Um, the endocrine system is a big, like the, there's quite a number of organs within the endocrine system. So I am, my intention is to just focus on the hypothalamus this evening. Um, if we have time left over, we, we may do something else, but mostly focus on the um, hypothalamus. We talked about the womb healing last time. So it's kind of, we talked about the gonads last time, which is also a part of the endocrine system. So we're moving to a different part of uh, more, more, more north, <laughs> more up top this time. So within the brain, there are the, the, um, the, the three organs within the, the brain, um, three of the organs of the endocrine system is the pituitary, the hypothalamus, and the pineal gland. So those three are the big three um, that regulates a lot of our body function and also our experience of this reality. So the hypothalamus, um, it's about regulating the, the, um, the body temperature, also regulating uh, emotions as well. So, and um, what else does it do? Um, hormones. So of course, um, endocrine system is about hormones. So secreting different hormones to direct all the other glands um, to, to help um, to see what kind of, how to, when to secrete the, the hormones to um, regulate functions of a lot of other different organs within the, the body. So that's what we will be focusing the, the um, well, not, not so much talking about it because, you know, I'm not a doctor, so I can't really tell you about the endocrine system much, not, uh, not from a um, scientific kind of way uh, I work with energy so we're going to definitely work on shifting some um, I would say energy patterns of the the, um, the hypothalamus to, um, this evening but before we do that I just want to um, do a short meditation with everybody so that we can all just get present so let's um Maybe move your body to so that you can make sure you sit comfortably um, and also with your feet on the ground as well, if you, if you can. If not, do whatever it is that you like. So just do this meditation by simply breathing in deeply through your nose. Breathe in through your nose until you cannot breathe in anymore, and then start to breathe out slowly through your nose. And then breathe in again. And breathe out. Breathe in one more time, deeply. And breathe out. Continue to breathe in and out according to your own rhythm with the intention of elongating your breathing as much as it is still comfortable for you. Use your breathing to guide your body, to signal to your body that it is okay to relax now. And just do this deep breathing in and breathing out for a few more breaths, just to allow your body to come into relaxation mode. 
whatever the whatever the um, stress or other things happening during the day in this moment, just allow yourself to relax completely. And when you feel if there's any tension in your body, just internally ask that part of your body to soften, to just relax. There's nobody that is after you, no danger in your environment in this moment. So it's okay to just relax and let go of the tension in your body. Allow your spine to just naturally shift into a place where it feels natural to you. And while you allow your body to relax, also allow your mind to relax as well. Just let go. Focus on breathing. Focus on feeling everything in your body. And also focus on allowing your body to relax. And just be completely present to your own body. Everywhere all throughout your body. Just notice everything that's happening in your body. Just notice it. No need to do anything about it. Except to ask your body to relax. And when you feel your body being more relaxed, then set the intention that you want to call back all of your energy, all of your attention, all of your intention to yourself. So that you can be present to anything and everything that is happening to your body in this moment. Be absolutely present to your physicality, to your body. To everything that is around your immediate environment. but mostly be present to yourself. Be present to any tension within your body. Be present to your thoughts. No need to engage them, but just notice them. Just observe your own thoughts. Whatever thoughts you may have, it's absolutely perfect. Don't try to resist it. Just accept it completely. And allow yourself to be present to everything that is 
inside you in this moment. And feel what it feels like when you are present, completely present to yourself. Feel that difference and remember it. And when you feel yourself being present in this moment, then come back to the room. Open your eyes if you have them closed before. And just take a deep breath in. Let it all go. And come all the way back into the room. Welcome back, everybody. Um, let me just check my notes to see what it is that I, if I needed to say anything more about the uh, hypothalamus. So I've already talked about um, the end. We are doing the endocrine system. And um, last week we talked about the womb area, which includes the ovaries in the women and also testes in the, the male gender. And the focus for this evening would be the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is one of the um, master gland, meaning that it... Um, the hypothalamus together with the pituitary and the pineal gland secretes hormones depending on what the um, what the occasion requires for us to actually be able to regulate the body, how it functions and what we want to, if there's anything we want to adjust about our body then the hypothalamus is one of the major glen that would secrete different hormones to let all the other organs know what they should do. Secrete more of, you know, adrenaline or some other hormones in order to support the body to have an experience. <laughs> And um, I just want actually want to go over the uh, different organs within the hypothalamus. So we've talked about pineal gland, hypothalamus, pituitary. There's also the parathyroid, thyroid, and thymus glands. Uh, excuse me, can I need to mute. Yeah. If you need to make any noise, please mute yourself. And um, what else? Um, what are some of the other? Okay, yeah, the parathyroid, thyroid, and thymus glands. Those are more for, um, well, especially the, the thymus gland is more for the immune system. And then adrenal glands is for um, stress, meaning to, to deal with um, when, we, when we encounter any, any situation that um, gives us some stress, then it will, the adrenals will handle secreting cortisol to <clears throat> prepare us for the fight or flight um, reaction and then pancreas is more for um, digestion and kidneys and then there is the ovaries and the testes that we already talked about so those <clears throat> those glands are together and all together it's it's called the endocrine system 
and um, what would actually what actually may contribute to the endocrine system being out of balance. One, uh, a few things, a few things that may do that. For example, traumas, whether it is physical or emotional traumas. It could be toxins. It could be toxins from the environment or from our food, from all sorts of different things. And then there's also, of course, um, if we encounter any emotional situation, um, stressful situations, then and, and we are not very good at balancing our own emotions and keeping and our managing our own stress, then those emotional imbalance would also throw our endocrine system out of balance as well. Um, like most of the time is more temporary, but if it's a, um, I would say a long-term trauma that, has, that we haven't quite deal with, then it could be a chronic situation that eventually would exhaust the, the endocrine system. And um, <clears throat> endocrine system, basically, it's about structuring our experience of this reality, meaning that, you know, whenever we feel emotions, whenever we, we feel emotions, the, the endocrine system actually secretes the different hormones to allow us to really feel sad and to really feel or to really feel anger or to really feel joy, all those emotions without the um, hormones. We may be able to feel part of it, but um, our emotions will not be as pronounced. So the, the, the hormones, therefore, really support us to have, to, to have a full experience of this human experience of this human experience and um, sometimes it's a good thing sometimes not so, such a good thing so <laughs> it really depends so um, and um, uh, oh um, just want to mention some of the things that you can help yourself in terms of keeping your own endocrine system balanced is to really eat clean food as much as possible. Meaning, um, usually if you eat um, food that you prepare yourself or it's prepared, um, I would say by, by, by more caring chefs that would also be making sure that the food you eat is is really supporting you nutritionally and um, energetically as well. Not just the food, but also water or other liquids that you put inside your your body. Um, the tap water is it safe to drink? Um, I would highly suggest that um, at least filter the the tap water because there there are lots of different um, chemicals in the in the um, in no matter which city you you live in there are different con um, combination of chemicals that's in your tap water that it's it's a good thing because it helps make sure that the water that you drink is um, relatively harmless for you. On the other hand, because a lot of the chemicals that they use to clean to make sure the water is is safe enough to drink are actually um, could be inhibitors to your endocrine system, different glands within your endocrine system. So. Just uh, do some really basic um, filtration for the liquids that you you drink. And um, so that would be some of the more basic things that you can do to make sure the food 
that you take in supports your endocrine system. And also um, do detox yourself. It could be as simple as just doing a half day or, or like 18 hour fast just to allow your body the, the time to detox itself. Or if you are more adventurous, then do a one day or even a three day fast, depending on how um, robust you, your body is. And if, if in doubt, please check with your doctor or naturopathic um, um, person that you go to. So these are things that we can do very rather easily to, um, to, to help our body. I actually recently heard one person to be saying that if you if your budget does not even allow you to buy some um, filter for the, the the water that you drink, then what you can do with just no no um, um, in with just zero dollars is actually to put the the water in a um, a big tank and and um, with the lid with um with the lid off meaning that it's not completely um, closed off so that some of the more harmful gas may be able to just um escape um i think um chloride usually if you put your water out just put it in the big container and allow the the, the chlorine to evaporate in usually in about a day or two then it's it's, it's a little bit better for your body. So even without spending any money at all, you can still do something. There's still something that you can do to improve the, the, the quality of the water that you drink. And if you just do a, um, a fast 18 hour or, or 24 hour fast, it does not really cost you anything except um, the maybe a little bit of discomfort for adjusting to having no food for a more extended period of time. These are really cost-effective ways to help your own body. And um, I think that's all, that's about all I want to talk about because as I already mentioned, I'm not a doctor, so and um, please don't um, construe anything I say as being um, doctor advice. I am just sharing my own learning and also my own experience as well. So, um, and so any questions or comments before I start the, the, the energy, I would say energy process part of this evening. Any um, special requests that you like? Anything in particular about hypothalamus? That I I have a question. Sure. How does I mean? It may be more of a biology question. How does hypothalamus control the temperature of the body? Um, it secretes hormones. Which specific hormone? Um, I am not sure, but it um, it actually uh, so a couple of things. It regulates the the, the how your body responds to um, blood flow, the blood um flow so it regulates the heart so it also regulates the blood flow so when and also um, affects the temperature of your body very minutely mm. and it um, also like when it is hot it actually secretes uh, it, or it secretes hormone to let the your your skin because your skin is is actually your biggest organ uh, for the, the pores of your skin to open up so that it can um, 
give out sweat and so allow your body to cool down naturally. So that's how it regulates your body's temperature. And I guess when it's really cold, then it, the body sort of uh, tightens it, to yeah. save on energy, correct? Uh, yes, to save, yeah. save on energies and also um, to prevent um, like moisture from your body to escape too quickly. It keeps you dry so that you will be um, so so that you it's better for you to hang on to your the heat of your body. Right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and also hypothalamus um, regulates our emotions a lot. So a lot of our um, emotions, all those are uh, uh, regulated by the hypothalamus. So um, if you, if a person is a more emotional person, um, your hypothalamus would be more prone to get out of balance. I know that because I am an emotional person, so. <laughs> <clears throat> Any other questions, comments? How often do you recommend um, the fasting? Um, it depends. If it's the first time you do it, then I would suggest that you maybe do it every start with every other week because if you if you have never fasted then um and you're using this as your as a, as a way to detox the body then do that uh, every other week just fast um either a half day or one day um, however, if you regularly do detox, then maybe all you need to do is just um, once a month, mm -hmm. just to like just to maintain. Thank you. But it it really depends. It's it's it depends on the person as well. It also depends on your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, for some people, they may only be able to. Um, manage like one day out of the month that, that they can actually um, do a fast because usually when you fast um, you, you drink a lot more water so you may need to use the bathroom more often so you may want to um, stick to places where it's convenient for you to go to the bathroom so it, it disrupt your um, your your regular daily routine so it, it so it really depends on each person so uh, since we're talking about inexpensive ways what would you recommend if you wanted to do detox something really easy and inexpensive think water What's that? Drink water. Water, okay. Drink water. Um, so you should be the, I would say, um, without knowing anything about a person, because um, like I, it depends on, the person, I, I I don't feel comfortable advising other people to do a fasting because okay. their their body may like they may have um like illness that prevent them from being able to fast even half a day okay. for whatever reason. So, however, water is pretty safe. So just okay. make sure that you drink some uh, drink lots of water. So. What is lots of water? I think uh, I heard the, the um, there is a um, so for each 
I think there's a, um, a formula that is drink at least for um, a regular person, just eight glasses of water, um, eight ounce too. So just a regular glass, so just eight glasses. And, um, however, if you, if you exercise a lot or if it's in the summertime, you may want to even drink more than that. However, if you are doing a, a detox, using water as a detox, then definitely drink at least eight glasses. Pure water, not um, soft drinks or tea. Right, or right. So what just... about like detox teas? I have some detox teas. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they do anything really, but like or think... dandelion root or, you know, things like that. If it is non-caffeinated, it's probably okay. But mm -hmm. if it's caffeinated, because caffeine itself may, um, it's really not as good for your body. So mm -hmm. I would suggest like, making sure that if you if you want to go with a, a detox tea, then go with a detox tea that does okay. not have caffeine in it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you're most welcome. And um, any other thing before we actually start the, the session? Oh, I actually just have, have a comment is um, detox. Um, it's not just the body that needs to be detoxed is everything. So you may want to actually take, um, when, when you're doing a detox, you may actually want to um, detox on every level because we don't just, uh, it's, it's not just our, our body, it's also our mind as well. So you may want to have maybe once a, um, a week or once every other week to spend a half a day, at least half a day that you um, are away from the TV, the, the, your computer, your cell phone, or from anybody, just be, just spend um, half a day or like a chunk of time as it, it could be as much as you know, half a day, if you can swing it, or maybe just an hour, if you if you um, have a lot of people in the house, so that you can just spend time, just let go of all the distractions. So that's another way of detoxing as well. Because a lot of the times it's, uh, it's not just what we put in our body, but also what we put in our mind that um, creates issues for ourselves. So that's uh, that's another suggestion that I have in terms of detoxing. Um, going out for for a walk in nature, absolutely um, wonderful for detoxing because nature is very healing as well. And um, if you go to go hut a tree, uh, the, um, a nice healthy tree though, not, not more of the sickly tree. Nice healthy big tree, if you hug it, the tree actually grounds the, um, any, I would say more toxic energy, it, it can ground that and take it out of your your energy field. So that's a good way to detox yourself. Okay, so I'm just going to, uh, so 